creating cultural awareness and understanding. This is Culture Click. Culture Click is written and produced by KQAL FM on the campus of Winona State University. Did you start a garden this year for the first time? Or maybe you've had a garden before but sometimes struggle to maintain it. Today on Culture Click, we talk to Deborah Martin from the Winona County Master Gardeners. Deborah fills us in on what it takes to maintain a healthy garden, as well as tips for beginners. I'm Bill Stoneberg with Deborah Martin on Culture Click. How are you doing today, Deborah? I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day outside. It is. It's a beautiful summer so far. A little warm, but you know, it's. Yes. <laughs> it is a beautiful summer. <laughs> right. Well, thanks for being on the show today. Um, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier, and I said I thought it was an interesting topic, and. Uh, you know, we like to highlight organizations around town, and the Master Gardeners are here in town. So I also, like I said, just started planting stuff myself, and I don't know much about gardening, so I'm real curious. Um, you know, it's not really the time to plant right now, but uh, what should you do? Like, if you've got your garden planted or some flowers or whatever. What kind of maintenance should be, you be thinking about, you know, throughout the summer? Well, a couple things that I want to clarify before we go on. Okay. I grew up on a farm. Okay. And when I always talk about gardening, it's a vegetable garden. So, oh, okay, sure. Um, but I know for other people, gardening also means flowers Right. Um, on that. And so as we kind of go through today, I'll probably be touching base on both of those things okay. um, f- for it. So right now, um, your question was, how do you maintain um, uh, like a healthy garden? If we're looking at a flower garden, mm-hmm. one of the best things you can do is to make sure you deadhead. So oh. um, after the flowers have bloomed, uh, to go out there with like a, just a little bit of like a scissors um, and cut off uh, the dead blooms, uh, oh. that'll do two things. One is that um, the dead material is always a host for some type of disease, uh, maybe oh. fungal or, or uh, maybe even in, insect related. And so getting that off can help get rid of any, um, keep the fungal disease lower, right. uh, especially we've had this wet year so far. Mm-hmm. So fungal diseases are very common right now. Okay. Um, and the other thing that it does, especially with um, annuals, is that it keeps them blooming. Oh, really? Yes. And so um, don't hesitate to go and cut off those dead blooms. That's the best thing to do. And then you can take those dead blooms and you can put them in a compost pile um, and have them compost um, as long as they're disease free. I'm going to have to do that tonight. I I did not realize you'd do that. (laughs) Yeah. And with your perennials like irises and stuff, you really don't want them to go to seed because then they're going to use all their energy to go to seed oh. and you're not going to be taking that seed and planting it you're wanting right. the roots to grow and okay. so by deadheading the uh, perennials uh, that will help to maintain a good root um, so that the next year it will come back such as irises or peonies right. or, or stuff like oh, that cool. okay um, in your vegetable garden what you can be doing of course is weeding right. and I know we have another question coming up on on weeding um, but also, um, again, just checking your plants to make sure that you don't have any um, fungus coming, uh, especially like tomatoes. Uh, early blight and late blight will start to show on the lower leaves, um, okay. turning them brown with spots, you know, brown spots on them. Okay. And the best thing with that is to get rid of them. Now, don't put those in your compost pile because they have a fungal in them. Uh, oh. But bag them up and maybe put them in your trash okay. um, to get rid of those. So tomatoes um, are kind of susceptible to that. Um, pottery milk do because we've had such a wet year Mm -hmm. that's very common on like the uh, cucumbers and squashes again just looking around is our leaf that's starting to get looking like it has talcum powder on it okay Uh, get rid of that Uh, again bag it put it in your garbage um, so that um, you can maintain more of a disease free so do you go through and just kind of cut the leaves that are that are looking bad or Right. And typically, like on the tomatoes, it's going to be your lower leaves. Um, You can remove about a fourth of your leaves and still get a good product from your tomatoes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And in fact, they recommend getting rid of some of the lower ones because uh, the fungus is in the soil and so it can bounce up onto the leaves. And so if you raise up that lower leaf, um, less chance of it getting infected oh, cool. on that. Um, another thing that you could do is fertilize as needed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know we have another question on fertilizer, so I'll right. wait to kind of answer a little bit on that. And of course, just maintain a, a watering schedule um, okay. that is going to be healthy. And um, especially like with any plants, uh, the less water on the leaves that you can put or the on the fruit uh, will help to 
prevent fungal growth um, okay. or bacterial growth. Um, and so um, a drip line or just making – or um, if you are doing like an overhead watering system, do it early in the morning so the leaves have time to dry okay, uh, during sure. the day. Okay, cool. Now, do we have to water a lot, like when it's been raining a lot lately? Oh, no, no. I haven't had to off. water my vegetable garden or flower okay. beds. Um, oh, cool. I have a couple of hanging plants that don't get rain right. water, um, and so I've been having to do them. And um, and then I do have some potted plants, and I've been having to, the last couple of days that it hasn't rained, mm -hmm. they dry out very quickly. And oh. so, again, just looking at them, I do have a water gauge that I can go and stick okay. in. And um, But typically, if you can put your finger in and it's dry for a couple of inches, it's like you better be watering them. Right, and right. rule of thumb, usually potted plants every day when right. it's hot. Like yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they don't dry out. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, cool. Um, and then what about uh, you know you mentioned it a little bit, but like weeds, you know, uh, weeding your garden, you know, um, do you do it by hand or you know I know people might use some chemicals or something like that, weed mats. I mean, what's the best route to go? Um, well, it, a lot depends on you know what what you have in your garden. Um, uh -huh. So if we're looking at a flower bed uh, or perennial, um, again, a lot depends upon your personal preference. Are you into like no chemicals? Um, the best way to do that is um, with a hoe or uh -huh. some type of digging tool that you yep. can get in there and you can remove the roots of the weeds. You just don't want to take the leaves. You want to make sure you get to the roots okay. on that. And uh, so pulling them. Um, but uh, especially with a lot of the perennials, if you mulch, uh, that is one of the best ways of doing weed control. Really? Um, and there's a lot of variety of mulches out there. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, wood chips is a very popular one. Right. Um, cocoa husks is another one that oh. has become very popular. But one of the things, if you have pets, you should be aware of the fact that if you use like the cocoa, um, uh, that's chocolate and that's poisonous to dogs. Oh. Yeah. All right, so you don't want your dog going and looking um, right. those, so that might not be the option that That's you have. Good advice, huh? um, the weed mats, um, anything that is rubberized or anything like that, I wouldn't recommend. Okay. Uh, that has more of a tendency to keep moisture into. That could oh. um, maybe um, do fungal growth. Right. Um, it maybe doesn't let the soil breathe and just the roots of the plants breathe as well. Okay. Um, on that. Um, with perennials and flower beds, uh, you could use um, a, a weed uh, control um, if you feel comfortable. Um, and there's many of them out there that are available. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to promote a coming, but like preen is one that a lot of people always ask me about. Okay. And it's one of those of where it prevents the seeds from germinating. And so if you do have weed seeds in there, they won't germinate. And so okay. that's a one you want to... Do it, you know, early in the year to make sure the weeds don't germinate. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times you can buy it with a little bit of fertilizer in it too. Um, but there are other ones out there that you could use um, if to maintain a more okay. weed-free. So maybe just if you're interested in that, do a little research first. Right. And, and that's yeah. the main thing is always use it as instructions. Uh, right. If you do want to do a chemical for weed management, mm -hmm. um, they, um, it's what we refer to as a uh, pre-emergence. Uh, because it prevents the seeds from germinating versus okay. putting it on like um, uh, Roundup, which is a post-emergent. Uh, okay. That means that the plants are there actively growing. Um, and the thing like with Roundup is that you don't want to hit your plants because it will also kill oh, your plants too. And yeah. so it's, you got to be very careful okay. when you use a post-emergent um, on that. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so what about insects, you know? Um, I've heard a lot about insects. They'll be eating your fruits or the plants itself. Or, uh, how do you deal with them? It kind of depends on how bad the insects are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know, like, right now we're going to be starting to see the Japanese uh, beetles coming out. Mm -hmm. And they they love roses and hibiscuses. Oh. And I've seen them on my green beans. Oh, wow. um, rose, uh, raspberries. Um, not too much on my blueberries, but uh, the best way for me to manage it because I really don't, those are things I'm going to be eating and I don't want right. to put weed control or pesticides on those. Right. Um, and so I literally have this 
ice cream bucket that I fill about a quarter fill with with water and um, a detergent in it. Oh, really? And I just go around and I shake them in. And if you do it earlier in the morning, they're not quite as energized as later in the afternoon. Uh Um, And I'll just, um, once they hit that soapy water, it uh, closes up their breathing tubes. And so then they die. Um, I do have to be careful on my raspberries because the bees like my raspberries. I don't want to grab a bee um, at the same time. Um, So that's just one way is just to go out and check your your plants and see if it has any of the um, beetles on it or um, any type of a worm that might be eating Mm -hmm. it um, and just uh, put it into a bucket of sudsy water and then once they're dead, um, again, put them into your garbage um, uh, because they, um, many times the Japanese beetles may already have eggs in them and if you just bury them or anything like that, the eggs can hatch still. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, they're... They're pretty prolific on that one. So when you're talking detergent, are we talking just like some dish soap or something like that? just a dish soap. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. That's a simple Um, solution. So that's a non-chemical way of doing it. It is a more Um, labor-intense. I don't know. Every time I get one, it's just like, yes, I got one. Right. You know, so... um, (laughs) Um, or by, you know, anyway, it's, there's some reward system on like killing these um, insects. Um, but if you're talking something like a, a tree, I know some people have linden trees. Um, those are also will get decimated by Japanese beetles. Oh, wow. And so um, there are um, insecticides out there that can be utilized okay. um, to use. Um, uh, again, just go to... Um, any of the companies that have the insecticides, uh, read if it takes care of Japanese beetles, right. um, and then use it as um, recommended by the manufacturer. Okay. Uh, some of them are you spray on. Um, those you can target a little bit better areas. Um, others are systemic, whereas it will bring it up out of the roots and then the whole plant uh, will be um, protected on those. Okay. Um, again, you, you wouldn't want to be using that in any type of vegetable crop because then you would be getting the insecticide Ooh. in the food that you eat. Oh, yeah. uh, but if it's on, say, say roses, um, that would be uh, an option. Okay. They also like grape vines, and I know that um, there are people that raises grapes, and they're like, what can mm-hmm. I do? Um, and that's where the spray, you can at least spray the um, the leaves and mm-hmm. try to keep it away from from the fruit and right now a lot of the fruit it hasn't even started yet okay so, okay so um, you could do that you could do that but you wouldn't cool. want to use a systemic which comes through the roots and through the whole plant right right now what about you know we talked about insects and pests like that but what about stuff like rabbits and things i have a <laughs> lot of rabbits in my yard i have so. rabbits and i have deer <laughs> oh um, wow cool. in fact my friend just teases me that i just raised my garden and so the hostas is a salad bowl Uh lilies are um they like to come and just nip the buds of the lilies right away Uh before they bloom um it's been so wet that and rainy that i haven't been able to get out but typically you can use uh, some type of deer be gone um or um uh, there's rabbit be gone type things that you can spread around uh obviously the best way to get rid of any to keep prevent something like that and my vegetable garden is fenced because okay. that keeps the rabbits and the deer um, sure. out uh, and a lot of people say oh you have to have like a nine foot um, fence oh, geez. I only have <laughs> like a three to four foot fence and yeah. that keeps the deer out because it's too much effort there's plenty of other things for them to eat right. that isn't fenced um, cool. that I don't have too much of an issue um, but I do have I'll use something like a deer be gone I kind of make my own up with with eggs and a little bit of ammonia and hot pepper sauce. Oh, wow. and, um, and if I can get that on early in the season uh, and get them trained that, ooh, that has to really doesn't taste, taste good. very good, uh, then they don't come back and, and, and eat it. But as okay. I said, it's been so wet, I would have to be doing it every day. Yeah. Um, and then it would get washed off. So um, that's on my list of things to do this week because I think it's going to be drier really dry. and I can sure. um, get those. Um, but that's one of the ways. Things that you have to think about, especially with perennials, is rabbits and deer will eat them all year. It's not just oh, not just spring and summer and, right. and that, um, and especially like tender barks. Um, so um, what you can do about that is maybe put up a deer netting around them. Okay. Um, um, maybe a rabbit guard at the bottom of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they really did like my burning bush the rabbits did and so they okay. girdled it um 
and I had it protected from deer. I didn't have it protected from rabbits. Oh, and no. so it killed it. So Oh wow. Those things happen. Yeah. That's when you the have chance little critters. You take, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what about so we mentioned a little bit about uh pesticides and, and uh weed control. Uh what about fertilizing? Uh can you do that throughout the growing season or is that something you mainly do before you plant? Yeah, it's all through the season. All through the season, okay. But I do want to mention, let's say that you're starting a flower bed and uh-huh. you're like, should I have fertilizer? Or you're starting a vegetable garden. Uh, one of the first things that you really should do is have a soil test done. Oh. Um, and the reason for that is you, you don't know how much fertilizer is in there. Mm-hmm. And over-fertilizing is not good for our environment. Right. Um, it gets into our waterways. It gives nitrogen algae love nitrogen they bloom you know and so then it's it's a not good for that our environment so it's better if we just put the amount on that we need it's also Mm -hmm. cheaper if we just put on the amount that we need i know some people say well it costs to do a soil test in the long run you're going to be saving money because you won't be using as much fertilizer right and one of the things that we find here in the monona area um typically when we i'll back track a little bit typically we talk about fertilizer we're saying nitrogen phosphate and potassium okay all right those are the three things that we're wanting to add those are three of the things that the biological molecules that are found in plants are are grown up on all right and we can also take a look at carbon but we typically don't add that as fertilizer Mm -hmm. Um, that's very common in the soil but it turns out in the Winona area phosphorus is pretty high Oh, really? And so we really don't want to be adding any more phosphorus than what we would need. Right. And I know a lot of common ones might say, oh, it's 10, 10, 10. That would mean that it has a ratio of 10 uh, nitrogen uh, parts per whatever and 10 Mm -hmm. phosphorus and 10 uh, nitrogen, I mean, potassium. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing is that we don't need the phosphorus. Right. right? And so you would want to go and look for a fertilizer that didn't have the phosphorus in there. Okay. And in fact, some areas, some counties are forbidding stores to sell fertilizer with phosphorus oh, in there. Oh, really? Because that really causes algae blooms. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. So um, a soil test is yes. one of the things that you would want to do first. That would be important. Um, yeah. As you're starting your flower bed or as you're starting your garden. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yes, you would want to... Uh, fertilize it and again when you read the fertilizer a lot of times they say reapply this every so often Um, and there's different ways that you could apply it Uh Uh, some of them are in the spray form that you hook up to your uh, hose and you have a sprayer um, on it others can be just a granule form that's like a slow release Um, uh, in my garden a lot of times I'll just do a little trench and 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 Put the amount that I would need so that it'll soak down to like the tomato roots mm-hmm. um, as I'm doing it um, a couple times during the, s- the season. Okay. So make sure you get that soil test and do your research Search. on your fertilizers. So. Right, right. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have a tendency to over-fertilize. Yeah. Um, and with flowers, if you over-fertilize, they'll become green, but then they'll have less of a tendency to bloom. Oh. A lot of times oh, wow. flowers will bloom when they're a little stressed. Huh. And so it's like, oh, I'm kind of stressed. I better bloom and make seeds now. Oh. Um, whereas if they get the fertilizer, like, oh, they're like, yeah. I'm happy. I'm, wow. Everything's going great. I don't need to f- make seeds and propagate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good advice. I love it. Um, so what about uh, other things like uh, mulching? You know, is that just done before planting? You do things like that throughout the season? Well, it's or? always something you can add any time. Okay. All right. So okay. let's say that you didn't get it done. Um, when you first were planting your flowers, uh-huh. um, yeah, you can put it on any time. Oh, um, okay. You also will notice that it will decay over time if you're uh-huh. using like wood chips. Right. Um, if you're using fine wood chip, that will decay faster than the chunkier stuff. Right. But it might be better for weed control. Um, huh. You could always also use the landscaping mats um, and then put the wood chips on top of that, especially okay. like. In gardens, that's very common. Perennial gardens um, uh-huh. is very common. But um, anytime for weed control, you can always be adding it. Um, okay. So, and uh, you should also mulch around your trees. Um, oh. It turns out yes. that that most a lot of the roots of your trees are are within like the first foot um, that are absorbing moisture and stuff okay. and and nutrients and and so if you um, 
mulch around that you can keep weeds from growing where the the oh, roots are getting some of their nutrients, some of the nutrients. Mm-hmm. okay well that's good advice man i have more yard work to do that i didn't you should, realize yeah you can do as much as you want <laughs> and then another thing i was interested in was composting and you know like i said before i'm really new to gardening i don't know much at all so what is composting and how does that work So composting is really just taking dead plant material Uh and uh, having microorganisms work on it to take it all the way back to soil. All right, so it breaks it all apart. Um, So plants are made up of proteins and fats and Mm -hmm. carbohydrates, and those just get all broken down to their free um, calcium and phosphorus and nitrogen and um, all and and hydrogen, all those things. Um, And so... Uh, because it's being done by microorganisms, you want to keep it moist. Okay. Um, you also want to keep it aerated. If you don't have it aerated, it's going to have a tendency to go anaerobic, and that's going to smell. Mm. Oh! I always think about people that like just pile up all their grass clippings, uh-huh. and then you can smell it through the whole neighborhood, yeah. right? That's because it's the microorganisms that are at the bottom of the pile are releasing gases that smell because it's Uh not aerobic. It's not in the presence of oxygen. So you can do composting in a bin, you can do it in a pile, but the thing that you want to do is to keep oxygen flow through it. And so that means you have to turn it. Um, And so turning it helps to keep the oxygen going. Uh, What you'll notice is I'll get hot. Um, That's because the microorganisms are... Uh, metabolizing so they're releasing heat as they metabolize okay. um, and in fact the hotter it is the better it is because it will oh. kill the seeds or or um, that you might accidentally get into the compost okay. um, uh, so that if you use that dirt then then it's not going to have seeds that will germinate right it's kind of hard to keep it hot enough uh-huh. um, again a lot of times uh, people let it dry out and then the microorganisms don't survive they're like us we need water huh. to survive right. um, so it's an effort, but typically turning it once a week. I know somebody mm-hmm. else that, that uh, um, does a lot of composting, she'll do it like every three days, and oh. hers really decays very okay. quickly. The more you turn it, the quicker it okay. decays. Three um, days isn't bad. That's, that's a good schedule. It is. It yeah. is. And, um, and then once it's down to dirt, you can just use that dirt and put it, uh, and it's filled with nutrients then because right. it has just the carbon and the nitrogen and potassium all ready just to be put into the soil Cool. Um, on that. One of the things that people may not be aware of, they might say, oh, they'll take all their um, weeds that haven't gone to seed or Mm -hmm. dead plants and stuff, and they'll put them in, and they're green. Um, But it turns out that doesn't have a lot of carbon source. It's really high in nitrogen. Um, And so you also want to add browns to it. And so sometimes wood chips would be a good brown source. Okay. Um, In the fall, Dry leaves dry are a leaves. good brown okay. source. Um, straw could be a good okay. brown source um, okay. that helps to make a healthy um, compost. Okay, so make sure you kind of have a mix of brown yeah, and green? Yeah, about 50-50, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. But again, that turning it and keeping it aerated is really important. Right. Especially in town. You don't want to smell up the neighborhood. And, yeah, and yeah, exactly. Keep all your neighbors happy yeah i never knew that that you had to turn it like that mm-hmm. you know i just thought oh you throw it in a pile and it does its thing you know, it can do it but it will smell doing it right and it right. won't compose decompose as quickly as quickly okay now you know i know a lot of people in town that uh rent and stuff like that they might not have a backyard to put a garden in um can you plant vegetables and herbs in like pots and stuff oh or? you bet you can yeah even vegetables yes huh? patio gardens are a big thing okay um, a lot of people think oh yeah i can put a tomato plant in a pot sure a lot of people do that uh-huh. um, you just want to make sure it's a big enough pot that, that, that and, and enough soil for the tomato it's a pretty right. big plant when you think about yeah. it it looks uh-huh. little when you plant it but it can but get it, pretty big yeah, they get and pretty you want big. to support it um, and the nice thing is now they make patio tomatoes you know, that oh. are a little thicker stem and don't have to have quite the support. Oh, wow. Um, especially like with the cherry tomatoes, but I've uh-huh. seen them even on the larger tomatoes too. Nice. Um, so those are just great, but you can do peppers in a pot. Um, okay. You could do squash in a pot Ooh. if you want. Uh, and if it's a viney one, you want to make sure that it has the support for the vines. Okay. Um, but you can also do lettuce and beets. Um in fact, my, my daughter uh, lives in an apartment, and she has a nice patio, mm-hmm. um, and I was just there this weekend, and she has 
all sorts of kale and lettuce and Whoa. kohlrabi and beets oh, wow. all in pots on her patio. Um, the main thing is to make sure that they are watered because they dry out so much right. quicker. Right. Um, and then to make sure that they get sun six to eight hours a day. Uh, mm-hmm. That's another thing, that with, especially with vegetables. Um, and make sure you support them um, if you need to, like mm-hmm. a tomato or um, a squash. Um, she's trying watermelon this year. That'll be interesting Ooh, to see. Wow. Um, and uh, she said she's had salads from them all year long. Uh-huh. You were mentioning about it's getting kind of late maybe to plant. It uh-huh. isn't getting that late to plant. Oh, really? No. Okay. Um, you could still plant green beans um, for Ooh. a fall harvest. Nice. Um, they kind of like the warmer weather. Okay. Uh, probably towards the middle of August, even though it might be a little hot, you could start planting things like lettuce and spinach for a fall harvest. Oh, really? On that. Um, some of those cold crops, such as radishes and spinach and lettuce, um, if you try to plant them now, it might be too hot for them, and okay. they might be bitter because of that. Uh, oh. But again... In a pot, you might be able to put them in the shade a little bit to cool them off. Oh, sure. Um, and so definitely in a pot, you can be planting them all, oh, all cool. year. Yeah. Wow, oh, I didn't know that. season. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So what about, uh, you know, we're talking about planting vegetables in pots and things like that. Um, my dad, he's uh, he's getting up there a little bit, and he doesn't like to bend down to pick up the cucumbers anymore. And he mentioned something about a like a lattice or something yeah. for them to crawl up. You, can you yeah. do things like that too? I kind of call it the vertical garden Yeah. on that. Um, but that also made me think of something else. Raised beds are very popular. Oh, um, sure. And raised beds, again, are nice in the sense that uh, for people that can't bend down, mm-hmm. um, they also prevent you from like stomping down the soil. All right. And oh. so it's a little healthier for the soil than walking on it if you okay. have a raised bed. Again, just making sure that you keep it watered and fertilized Mm -hmm. um, and weeded is always important. Uh, But this vertical garden is something like uh, with green beans, that pole beans, Mm -hmm. um, or cucumbers or squash, um, is to have a support um, that will allow them to vine up, and then you can just um, pick the the fruits as as you need to i have a small garden and so to have it just like vine and take up like a five square foot area Uh is not how i could do my garden and so i have a lot of vertical supports oh really Um, so my cucumbers and my squash are all on vertical supports oh cool Mm -hmm. cool now do you have to does it have to be pretty sturdy to support the fruit it does okay it does so just make Um, sure it's strong enough yeah i was able to get some of these tripods that were bamboo tripods Uh and they've worked really well for my cucumbers really uh yeah and they also work pretty well for my peas um for vining but otherwise um there are some really nice, better than like the tomato baskets mm-hmm. um, that can be used for like the cucumbers. Because of course, you're talking about something like a, a butternut squash that gets pretty heavy. Right. So you want to have a good support uh, for something like that. Now, does it, uh, do they naturally climb up that if you put it near them? Or do you have to kind of a little know, bit of give both. them a little push? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some will find it uh-huh. as they vine out. Others, tendrils, will, like, keep searching. And, uh-huh. and so, you know, just, just encouraging them up there, them. and they okay. will, yeah, cool. do it, yeah. Cool. I, mm-hmm. I think that's really neat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like the vertical garden idea. I might try that next year. Um, or this fall yet. Who knows? Yep. You know? Yep. Um, and we talked about watering already. Uh, it's been kind of wet, so we hadn't had to a lot yet. But uh, what about... Um, People like me for beginners, uh, what would your just real general tips be? You know, like the first thing I should know about for watering, you know, gardening. Oh, just gardening in general. Oh, I gardening guess. in yeah. general. I would just say start small. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, advice. people would say, "Oh, I have this half acre. I'm gonna be planting it." It's like right. then you're gonna burn yourself out. And so, yeah. like, okay, this year I'm gonna do this. All right, start off there. Mm-hmm. Then. Have an idea like, okay, what am I going to do next year? Can I expand it? Is this big enough? Is this as big as I can handle? Um, So that's what I would say, first of all, is just to start small. Um, Perennials are nice for because they're low maintenance. You don't, and Mm -hmm. um, although you might have to trim them. And so a lot of times um, perennials are a good way to start. Mm -hmm. 
And then you can add annuals around if you want to have the continuous flowers. Right. You know, perennials kind of bloom and then they done for the oh, year. Done, some yeah. bloom in the spring, some in the fall. Right. That's another thing if you do do perennials is kind of get an idea of like include some that bloom early and some that bloom later in the year. Right. So, um, so like irises are always kind of early. Peonies are early. Mm-hmm. Um, but now then let's start getting some lilies in there too because they're going to, they're starting to bloom. Cool. Um, roses. You can get roses that bloom early, roses that bloom later, if those are some that you would like to put into your garden. Mm-hmm. Hibiscuses are a little bit later. Um, I'm starting to see uh, hydrangeas are starting to bloom now. Ooh. So, you know, that's not an early plant. It's kind of the July yeah, and, you know, some of those, those are the big puff balls of flowers oh, really? that you can oh, see. Oh, cool. I like those. Yeah. So what are those, those called again? Hydrangeas. Hydrangeas. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. And they come in blue and pink and white. And nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, so it sounds like you can kind of plan it out so you've always got something blooming if you want. That's the goal. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to. Uh, well, you know, speaking of which, are there uh, resources out there? I know the Master Gardeners have a meeting. Is it once a month? Or? We have a meeting the third Tuesday at 530 at the um, county building okay. on 2nd Street. Cool. Cool. Um, well, kind of between second and third, mm-hmm. uh, um, and it's open to the public. It, okay. So if if people want to come, uh, but you can also call the extension service if, if you have any questions on that. But the master gardeners also will have um, demonstrations around town or just open forums. Uh, the first weekend of every of May, June, August, and September. Um, at Wyndham Park um, on Saturday, the first Saturday um, is an open forum for people to come and ask oh, questions. Cool. The September one, I think, is the second weekend because of Labor Day. So, oh, sure. Um, okay. But people can come and ask any questions that they have. They usually nice. have a topic that's going to be presented. Internet, uh, if you mm-hmm. just type in Minnesota Extension Service, you can get to the webpage. Okay. And then there's um, a lot of resources that are available uh, to you to address, you know, what about this vegetable? Um, what about this insect? Um, and so right. you can identify what's wrong with this plant. Uh, um, so if you're in an F. Suave, those are the great resources that you can have. Okay, cool, cool. Mm-hmm. That's good to know. It's good that we have a, an organization like that near, you know, in town here. That we yeah, can and I know, utilize. like I just uh, did a presentation for the county workers uh-huh. on canning. Um, oh, cool. And then, but we, you know, some of my colleagues have done presentations at the library. Mm -hmm. Um, In fact, earlier this year, um, one of the colleagues was doing a whole series on vegetable gardening, um, utilizing the library um, to do that series of vegetable gardening. Mm -hmm. And so we're advertised in the newspapers. um, So just kind of keep an eye on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, We do have a Facebook page. Okay. And so if you want to like, our Facebook page, and um, we try to have updates of what we're doing on the Facebook page, too. Awesome. Sounds good. Yeah, lots of good resources out there. Like I said, I'm brand new to this, so um, it's nice to know that those resources are there. So I've been here with Deborah Martin. She's uh, part of the uh, Winona County Master Gardeners, and uh, they're right here in town. Like she mentioned, they have monthly meetings and everything and events you can go to. So I recommend checking them out. You know, check out their webpage and Facebook page. And uh, thanks so much for being with us today, Deborah. That's a lot of good info. Oh, thank you for having me. Thanks again to Deborah Martin from the Winona County Master Gardeners for joining us today on Culture Click. For more information on the Winona County Master Gardeners, just look them up on Facebook. To keep up on all things Winona and the surrounding area, tune into Culture Click Thursdays at 1230 right here on 89.5 KQAL. I'm Bill Stoneberg, and we've just heard from Deborah Martin on Culture Click. Creating cultural awareness and understanding. You've been listening to Culture Click. Support for Culture Click is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Culture Click is produced by KQALFM on the campus of Winona State University. For more information, look us up on the web at kqal.org. And thanks for listening to Culture Click. Are you interested in all things Winona and the surrounding area? Find podcasts of Culture Click and all your favorite KQAL shows by going to kqal.org and looking for program archives under the Media tab. Culture Click is made possible by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.